Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, a while back we did that uh, Ford Bronco, the Icon car, and uh, of course we did the uh, Jeep a while back, and we've just been getting tremendous reaction to the off-road stuff. Uh, I'm not really an off-road guy, but people just love it, and it's a huge, huge community. So we have another one here. This is a sort of a resto mod of the 1968 Toyota. This is a car, I think, that... Uh, or the off-road vehicle that really made it for a Toyota. But let's find out more about it. Let's get Jonathan Warden here, CEO and lead designer of Icon. How you doing? Good to see you Good. again. You too, Jay. Well, people really love the Bronco. What do we have here? Tell us about Excellent. this one. Excellent. Well, this was the one that was closest to my heart. Right. So my wife and I have had a company, TLC, that does like vintage Land Cruiser work for mm -hmm. many years. And then one day Toyota came to us and hired us uh, to basically build the pre-production prototypes for the FJ Cruiser because they understood that we really were engaged with that vintage utility client that Toyota right. kind of lost contact with. Right, otherwise. right. So after they did the FJ Cruiser, I was left kind of yearning to see my own original designs actually brought to light. So I went back to Toyota, made sure they were cool with it, explained I had this idea for this brand icon, and I wanted to revisit the classic FJ series. So we first launched with the FJ40, right. which is the classic, you know, the shorty one. Right. Then we did the FJ43, which is a long wheelbase that never came to America. And then the pickups, which Americans love, but they were only here from 63 to 67. Right. And then this is called the FJ44, which we just totally made up, basically because a lot of our clients, the wives would not approve the purchase because the family was not getting involved in the deal. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they wanted a six-passenger four-door, and that's what you see here. So where does this body come from? This body is made up in Vancouver by a shipwreck. Okay, so this is, this is not uh, <laughs> like the uh, Icon Bronco we did a while back. You're not taking an existing one and modifying it. Actually, I am, but yeah. this is easier because I can buy complete garbage, okay. ruined, derelict FJ40s. Oh, I see. Because and the bodies have such rust problems, right. we wanted to make the body in aluminum. Oh, I see. So, so we rebody it. Yeah, 5.30 seconds wow. thick. Wow, so unreal. obviously not as uh, heavy. Correct. And this is powder coated, isn't it? Yeah. So and you really can't scratch this. You can, but you got to work a lot harder yeah. than you did with paint. Yeah, yeah. And then polyurea coating on the underside instead wow. of petroleum undercoat. Well, I've never seen a whole car powder coated. That's pretty. Uh, Somewhat pre novel. Pretty amazing. All Pain right. In the butt. So, so this car never existed, or this vehicle never existed in this form. Correct. Okay. It's a little longer wheelbase, isn't it? Yeah, considerably. Yeah. And what motor do you use? Uh, I use the GM LS generation motors. Okay, essentially yeah. Corvette motor. Correct. Yeah. yeah How many horsepower that? are you getting out? Uh, 350 to 440, wow. depending on the choice the client makes. And that's no problem for uh, Toyota? No, they're cool. In fact, you know, it's funny when we started it, I wanted to use the, the iForce from right. Toyota. But Toyota's system and fulfillment manner, if they'd done that with me, it would have screwed up their core product and production. I guess. And I'm too small time, it wasn't worth their sure, hassle. Sure. So we went to GM because that's such an established. Ethic. Wow, so you have 400 horsepower and being aluminum, I'm curious, what is it? Well, it's extra thick aluminum. Is that much lighter than steel? Not really. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit, but it's really more about the durability. And a lot of our clients, these things are going to pretty harsh locales where yeah. the rust, you know, the steel would just be a train wreck. And what are you looking, a little over two tons? Yeah, these are uh, actually a little bit lighter than the Bronco. They're in the high threes, so about really? yeah, 36 okay. to 39. And you can carry a lot more people. Yep. Well, let's open the hood. Let's see, All how, right, you, cool. let's see how you get that motor in there. It's funny, there's actually more room in here really? than there is in the Broncos. Oh, I see. Look at that. Yeah. So the, the LS fits as if it's supposed to be in there. Yeah. And then we work with Griffin and do all US made uh, TIG welded aluminum radiators, right. all stainless Mandelbin exhaust, all air quip connectors and plumbing. And uh, we just kind of, as usual. Optima batteries. We use those yep. on everything here. Great product. Again, yeah. all LED lighting like the uh, Bronco has. I'm a sucker for diodes. They're yeah, great. Yeah. Very forever. cool. And what do you have? You have the plastic windows that zip up. Is that how that works? Yeah. So we're running uh, Mercedes uh, Hearts Canvas uh, four ply, oh, like the 280 SE, okay. where it's got the jute inside. So and it got it, it locks, and it would be hard to break through this plastic. Believe me. <laughs> At least you'd feel bad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And you've got air conditioning, and this all comes out, as, and I imagine the whole top comes down as well. Yeah, it? correct. And then the okay. roof rack is designed, uh, it's mounted to the roll bar, not to the top, so you can interchange that configuration. What do we have here, nitrous? Uh, no, that's what actually, that? it's a power tank, so it's a CO2 compression vessel. Okay. So you can air up uh, your tires after an off-road adventure. I see, I see. Deal with service in the ranch fence or what have you with okay. air tools. And you got your gas can right here, the whole deal. Uh, this is your antenna? Yeah. Obviously. Uh, we run the flexies because uh, yeah, yeah. steel mass on the trail is the first thing that gets ruined. 
All right, we're going down. Up, oh, down and we go. Let's see what it looks like. You'll notice similar architecture in the yep, rear. Yeah, yeah, and you've got these joints again that we yep, talked about. Yeah, Johnny joints. However, on Why these, no skid plate on this one? You know, it's tucked up so high, and this is such a thick gauge, it's yet to be an issue for yeah, yeah. super gnarly trail use clients. We'll build them as a request, but right, we've actually right. just saved the weight on these. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, ceramic coated mandrel band stainless exhaust. Right. Uh, we just switched to this new nifty black coating from Extreme. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, that's a power step, similar to the one you saw in the Bronco. Oh, I so see. Oh, I use see. Use entry yeah. for the second gotcha, row. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then in the front on the FJs, we're actually running a three bar with Panhard. Uh, it's interesting with uh, the Bronco. The engine center point is forward of the front axle. Right. So it, it required the radius arm design, whereas these sit back a little bit more. So the three bar was actually more fitting. That was fun to discover. Yeah, nicely done. Boy, yeah, thank you. Boy, nice and nothing here to hang up or get torn off. Yeah, and we use all cross-link wire. We hand solder yeah. all the connectors. Yeah. We use a lot of aerospace for hold downs and clamps and fixtures. Very cool. This is that polyurea coating I was right. talking about, more durable than the petroleum undercoatings. And again, this one is, I'm guessing this is probably a little bit more expensive than the Bronco, is that correct? Actually, no, the Broncos are a little bit less. I mean, they're still painfully expensive. Yeah, but, so what does uh, this one go for? Uh, my FJ series at large goes from about 125 to 195. The All FJ44 right. being the most intense of the bunch, and they go from about 160 and up. Let's take this thing for a ride. All right, let's do it. This is the kind of power these vehicles could only have dreamed of back in the 60s. I mean, there was nothing with this much horsepower you could buy. Back in those days, Ferraris and Lamborghinis at 350, 375. How funny to take this back to the 60s and blow off a Ferrari GTO. The fun thing is, this whole thing comes apart. Windshield pops out, everything. And you can just have yourself a real off-road vehicle. In some situations, the windshield folds down yeah. because if you're like crawling up a creek bed, yeah. it'll just rip the tree limbs. You just duck and party on. Quite a different feel than the Bronco, huh? Yeah. Totally yeah. different. Nice thing is you got a modern engine that meets all current emission standards, makes plenty of horsepower. admit these things are a lot of fun. Just incredible build quality. Very strong, much stronger than stock. As you can see, the uh, automatic gearbox is nicely integrated with the classic uh, gear lever here. See, right up here, you got park, reverse, there's neutral. Press the button down, drop it down into drive. Got your transfer case here for four-wheel drive. Four-wheel four -wheel drive, high and low, basically? Is that what yeah, that is? high range and low range, front rear axle. Okay. Let's take it up on the freeway, see how she cruises. And here's that steering wheel again. Haven't I seen this before? Yes, you have. It's my favorite. Yeah. Out of, it's out of a, those monster mining trucks that right. Caterpillar makes. Okay. Right. And explain, here's your obviously tachometer, speedometer, all your gauges right here, oil pressure. Then you got lights, wipers, right. fan, hot vent, cold, power port, and diode for bleed here. Then the two military toggles are for the auxiliary diode lighting. Right, right. And then you have the locking differentials and the dedicated air compressor controls for off-road. And these Corvette engines are bulletproof. I love this motor. The small block Chevy, what is this, 350 cubic inch? Is that what it is? No, we did the 5.3 in this oh. one. We also offer the 57350 as okay. well at a 420 output. Gotcha. vehicles. I'm not sure what you do, but gosh, this off-road stuff is so much fun to drive. Nice sense of mechanicalness to it. There's a heaviness without being heavy. Everything is nicely weighted, nicely balanced.
again, I want to thank Jonathan from uh, Icon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm liking this off-road stuff more and more. We'll see you next week.